Welcome back to more in Thailand. I've got a news here, Kun Gov, concerning the safety measures abroad during the flight. Because oh. you know that there is no such uh, kind of this security measures up abroad before. Okay. And so that means that I have to have a safety measure on board the aircraft? Don't we, we have that already? No. No? Oh. Okay. Not until yesterday. Oh, okay. Because the transport ministry yesterday has proposed a draft bill for the cabinet's consideration, and this involved the regulations and also punish, uh, punishable measures against those who committed, like, the coded crime or okay. just the offenses on the plane or oh. disrupting the in-flight services. So. It's not like just because you're on a plane and in the sky and not on land, you can mm. do whatever you want kind of no. thing. No. I think we have that law. We didn't? That's no, bad. No, this just like international regulations, I guess, but okay. not only for Thailand, because there are uh, cases and accusations before about the passengers that might have do something that caused trouble or like offenses against mm. the cabin crews on, bro on board. Oh, right? so maybe assault? or mm -hmm. sexual harassment and right. such. That's good. So this time, uh, the Transport Ministry has drafted this bill. Yesterday, Khun Chalit Rajan Thurubeksa, his deputy spokesperson for the Prime Minister's office, revealed that this new law that has just been given a green light from the cabinet has listed types of behavior that would be considered offensive, unlawful, including the harmful conduct to other passengers on the plane, mm -hmm. to the plane itself and also all elements of the aviation industry. This includes a lot of uh, offenses, not just the sexual harassment, this also includes the smoking in prohibited area or the usage of electronic devices, which, is, which are two of the most common misconduct or practices on the plane that mm. passengers might not, like, might not heed to the warning or safety measures of the plane wow of the airline right so they said that the new law will the violators of the new law will face up to 20,000 baht fine if they smoke like in the restroom of the plane or just using the smartphone or like tablet during travel other offenses here include the verbal abuse or sexual harassment against against other passengers or even the cabin crew herself this violators will receive a three-year jail term or 120,000 baht fine or both. Mm -hmm. There's still more here, the violence or causing fear to other passengers, the accusations of spreading false rumors that may cause panic to passengers or cabin crews flying in the plane. There might be some people who seem to enjoy too much like free wine or oh. beer during the flight mm -hmm. and if you getting too drunk and starting causing trouble, you may face a maximum of five year jail term or 20,000 baht fine. That's, That's serious. Good. Right. This is really good. Mm -hmm. Any decency caused on the plane will be treated as the crimes or civil offenses depending on the degrees of action. So hang in there or craving crews out there. Mm. There's regulations imposed and passengers. Yeah, we'll, we'll protect you. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, if you are not one of those bad passengers, you don't have anything to worry about, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's all good. But this is to protect the cabin crew. And mm -hmm. of course, um, you know, these people sometimes in in service industry, sometimes there were certain things that you cannot right. say, even if you feel like you would like to say mm -hmm. it or you want to talk back. So just give them this particular right, at least to, mm -hmm. you know, that, well, the law is looking out for you kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I can't believe this would be the first time that the Thai government has been I'm looking shocked. into the safety measures of the air I trouble. honestly thought that we always have that because they no. always, you know, announce it on board, like you're not supposed to smoke, mm -hmm. there's a fine and such like that. But of course, you know, in terms of sexual harassment, I guess is is harder because you don't have a ground mm -hmm. to actually like, okay, which jurisdiction are we in here because they're flying and such. But that's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, moving on to a case, a big case, really. I just mentioned there about the summit island mm -hmm. and prow bay in particular now we have been talking about the oil spill from the pttgc for a while now and of course they clean up and visibly it's look nice and sus but of course we have to look 
after the mm -hmm. effect. Now we are during the mitigation stage where various um, department and authorities are going in there and of course sending their staff taking samples and making sure that all the substances or residues are not left or at least if there are some left mm -hmm. we know about it now this is quite shocking Kun Wichian Jung Rung, uh, Rung Rung, excuse me, who is looking into this um, particular um, project, he actually said that due to the um, oil spill back on the July the 27th, um, which has now obviously, like I said, has been cleaned up already quite nicely, um, there was a team that were sending in to um, check all the water um, situation or water condition around the area of Summit Island. They say that in 12 beaches altogether that they are looking into this particular case. Now they say that back on the 3rd of August when they're collecting um, the water from Prow Bay, they said that they have found already um, yesterday they uh, Kun Wichian came out and announced the result, said that um, the oxygen level is not that bad. It's still, you know, within the normal level, standard level, that um, acceptable for the um, seawater. However, as for the mercury level, they say uh, he said that in Prow Bay as well as Tap Tim Bay, mm -hmm. they have found high mercury that is actually more than the acceptable level, the standard level, they say that um, normally for the mercury level in the seawater, it should not exceed 0 0.1 microgram per mm -hmm. liter. However, in Prow Bay, this is very shocking. It was at hi as high as 2.9 microgram oh. per liter. That's, That's like 2.8 microgram more than what is supposed to have. Now in the Tap Tim Bay, however, was um, not that much, um, is not as high, but still it's quite high, 0 0.25 microgram per liter. So it's still 0 0.24 um, higher than the standard level that is deemed acceptable for the mercury level. However, at this point they say that they are looking into other types of substance or residues that might mm -hmm. be in the water as well and they will report it to us later on, especially for the petroleum carbon level. Um, we would not know about that until the um, tomorrow, so the 15th, and we probably will hear more about it. Mm -hmm. However, they say that for Pau Bay, it is kind of understandable because obviously due to the you know oil slick and such that mm -hmm. we have seen so you know it, it is understandable that there might be some of the mercury levels remains there however for the top team bay is a little bit further away on the other side and they say that the fact that they found it is quite disturbing so they have to look more into that in terms of how exactly did it get there and what causes this because otherwise that means that um, in other beaches they might see similar level as well but at this point, we, we only has been reported in, in two of the, of the beaches. So 10 others mm -hmm. probably will be, the result will be released quite soon. Mm -hmm. So we'll be here a little bit more about it. Now they say that they also take the samples of all the sand as well, not mm -hmm. just water. So we will hear, definitely hear more about it for sure. And they say that all in all, it's cost about 3 million baht altogether for this operation mm -hmm. to look into all these lo uh, the level of mercuries and you know other kind of residues. And they say that the bill will be sent to PTTGC. All See, that's the reason that the experts and also academics have also already come out and said that not rushing to open the Prow Bay mm -hmm. because of the contamination, exactly. also the residue left on the beach or shoreline. Mm -hmm. And Kun Blot Prasop Surasawadi, our minister, has already taken his shirt off and swam already. Well, Kun Chuwit, come on, we said, was there. Even there. Yeah. And that's the thing they say that please, 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 at this point, refrain from getting into these two beaches at least. Mm -hmm. because because you have found we they have found already that there's some kind of you know the mercury level that's quite high now um, having said that they say yesterday there has been an evidence of one of a big turtle um, they call mm -hmm. it the new turtle um, mm -hmm. which is uh, a very I guess um, old rare turtles, species. rare species yes mm -hmm. like they, they believe that this particular turtle uh, was about 20 years old and weighed about 90 to 100 kilogram 
is quite big. It's like 3.3 um, inches in width and 32 inches in length. And it was found in on the beach um, in Rayong, of course, in the Suan Suan uh, beach area. So a lot of people were actually discussing about this and say that perhaps it actually died out of the, um, you know, the water slick and mm -hmm. such. However, having said that, there's no evidence just yet. So, you know, we can't pinpoint that on the oil slick. But still, at this point, they say that um, several things have been ongoing, especially the mitigation part, you know, make sure that all the, the samples are collected and the result will be, re, um, of course, presented to us. And mm -hmm. plus, there has been a talk with the um, lawyer versus the community members around the area. For the compensation. Exactly, compensation. And, you know, if they did not receive the acceptable mm -hmm. level of compensation, then there might be some legal terms um, against the PTTTC as well. Mm -hmm. So we probably will hear a little bit more about that. And we're still keeping a close watch on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving on to some more updates here. I've got more investigation just revealed about the case of Kun Ekayut Anchanbut, the oh. missing businessman who got like murder. Right. And That's police said case. that he got robbed and murdered because the culprits the won driver. his money. The, yeah, driver, right, his, the driver, his driver wants his money. However, it seems that it might turn out as a well-plotted murder here mm. and it might be caused by an experienced and professional killer oh. or killers. Oh. They might work as a team. Wow. Yesterday, the Even national... Even though they confessed? That's interesting. All right. You heard scapegoat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Yesterday, the National Human Rights Commission uh, which includes Kun Ying, Pon Tibro, Jana Sunan, a very well-known and respected specialist on autopsy investigation here in Thailand. She has also taken part in this investigation as well, and they revealed that they found that Kun Ekayut got bruises at three locations. The tip of the nose, the root and the left side of the tongue, and also the neck muscle on the right, but no bruise at all around the neck which the driver oh. confessed that they got like shoe lace to mm -hmm. tighten his, uh, strangled him. Right, using shoe lace. But that's mm -hmm. the thing, like at the time, the the information was just so mixed because mm -hmm. some, some newspaper would say, yes, there were like some kind of bruises mm -hmm. and some newspaper would not even mention that at all. So it's very, it was a mixed information that we received. Mm -hmm. and Kun Ying Pontiap has already taken part in this and she said that the autopsy found Kun Ekayut's neck was pressed and his nose blocked leading to the rapid death by suffocation but no bruised bruises around his neck as I said. The autopsy also found the wounds on the right shoulder and the left shoulder blade and this suggested that someone might have been behind him and Kun Ekayut had struggled. There's also other wounds on his breasts and feet that were from being tied up from someone. However, they suspected that this might be like a well-plotted murder because there seems to be a preparations about the plastic that used to wrap his body. Mm -hmm. Because after Kun Ying Pontiff saw his body that they dug up from the ground, mm -hmm. she knows already that this is not like, they just put him in the ground and oh, dug him. Okay. He might have been killed in Bangkok or nearby like provinces here and that's like a different south. case altogether they traveled down south and at the time his body has already been well wrapped oh because uh, so so she suggested that this might be the acts of professional killer or killers as I said Wow okay not that's just robbing and murder and that's different case altogether concealing body right okay that's disturbing, actually. However, Kun Kamron Vithu Prajang, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, said that uh, if the if this investigation team got more like information, just give them to authority. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. It seems like there's too many teams. Why can't they just work together? This is like independent investigation team. Right. The and I think the thing is, a lot of people are not really believe. You know 
uh, yeah, exactly. Like accepting the transparency of this mm -hmm. particular process. Let's just put right. it that way. Because it seems like there's a lot of hazy area that we have seen. And obviously this particular thing, that changed the case altogether. It's very yeah. suspicious, right? It's very conflicting. However, there's still more details and also evidences to be revealed later mm. after so we they might hear this about it later on. So, mm -hmm. hey, it could have just been a mistake that, you know, they didn't catch it on and such. Maybe. Let's give, give them a benefit of a doubt here. Now, uh, moving on to another case, not very good news as well. I think lately we have reported about the Southern violence mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Um, once again, yesterday, um, you know, sad to report, there is uh, one ranger that has been killed due to a bomb blast. And this particular case is actually quite disturbing due to the fact that the blast did not occur right away. This is um, happened yesterday at about 9.30 um, of the 12th, actually, of the night before. Now, they said that Kun Sayan Chana Chai Wong, who is the sheriff of Suk Ngai Pati um, district, were actually attacked. His car was attacked. There were people that um, using uh, the military arson, like AR, M16 and such, mm -hmm. to shot, like to shoot his car. However, luckily, um, his car was actually bulletproof. Mm -hmm. So that means that it didn't quite get Kun Sayan Chai Chana Wong. However, of course, um, after the report, the team. The, the rangers as well as the military staff went into the area to investigate the area and that's when the blast happened. Mm -hmm. The militants actually planted a bomb around the area, waited for the team, the, the rescue team as well as the officials to get into the area who thought that they were investigating another crime mm -hmm. and they detonated a bomb. Cla the, the blast caused the um, people in the area, so the villagers as well as the staff, um, the authorities, to actually, you know, get effect from this bomb blast. Now, 10 of them all together, and unfortunately, um, one person in particular, the official Kun Rung Road, Mekrat, um, did not make it um, even after he went into the Sungai Pati hospital. So he passed away due to this bomb blast. And like I said, it's one of those um, tactics that they use mm -hmm. is that they try to create a scene, a crime scene, so that the authorities would get in. And then the actual crime happened when they uh, detonate the bomb. Mm -hmm. Now there's another, um, there are a few others in Naratiwa province, for example, the protection units would actually attack. Luckily, no one was hurt, but they say that the unit, um, the staff were sitting around in this particular um, building of the Lubo Baya uh, sub-district protection unit. And they say that the culprits, two of them came with the um, M16 rifles and mm -hmm. start blasting um, the bullets on these 14 people, the staff. However, the staff were able to, to, took uh, to take cover and shot back. And that's when the two culprit uh, went away. Mm -hmm. However, they did not say whether or not um, these two culprit got hit. And there was also another one in Patani province where Kun Satit in Tasiri was sent to the Mayo Hospital. Now he is a um, physical education teacher mm -hmm. of the Ban Ken Tao School. Now he was attacked by two of the culprit in the motorcycle as well, start shooting him. So I guess it seems like the blast is still ongoing. And just one last thing, just before we take a break here, mm -hmm. in Patani province, they say that Kun Wa Hama Wa Gutik who is actually a chief of one of the local uh, radio station, the Salatan radio station. Mm -hmm. He said that he got a chance on the 6th to the 8th of August to went in and interview the BRN um, leader, Kun Hassan. And, Yip, right? Yeah, Hassan Tayyip, exactly. And then talked about you know the, the negotiation mm -hmm. and such, the peace talk. And Kun Hassan said that, yes, he would like the peace talk to continue, of course, but of course they have to wait for the Thai side as well in terms of responding to their five demands. Mm -hmm. And when Kun um, Wehama asked about the situation where there's a rumor that he might step down mm -hmm. from become from you know the position of leader of BRN, he started laughing and he said, "Is there such a rumor?" Oh. So that's confirmed. 
he's still stand put and you know they rumors say that are rumors exactly and you know according to this particular person that um conducted in and in this particular interview said that it seems like they still want a peace talk mm -hmm. but of course there's condition so just wrap that and we will go for a short break and then when we come back of course the reform panel and another interesting news there will be a close watch on how you chat online and mm -hmm. such so great fun please stay tuned